The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, in charge of the bizarre, keeper of the grotesque, collector of the fantastic. It is my duty to delve into unfrequented places in search of the unexpected. I deal in that touch of the improbable, which gives a series of events the quality we call mystery. If an element of horror creeps in now and again, you don't really mind, do you? I thought not. Actually, that's why we're all here, isn't it? You want to take some advice from an old woman who knows pretty much what goes on in the town of Colony? What advice? If I was you and wanted to finish my nice vacation like I planned, go around the country camping out, if I was you, I'd just get up from here right now, get into my car, and I'd drive right on ahead to wherever it was I wanted to get to in the first place. I wouldn't spend one more minute than I had to in the town of Colony. <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Colony, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Fielden Farrington and stars Tony Roberts. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. If you were doing the looking, where would you look for an occurrence that could be properly described as macabre? Where would you expect a nightmare to happen? In some dusty dungeon overlaid with a patina of past horrors? In an ancient Middle European principality famous for its vampires and walking dead? Well, weird goings-on would seem suitable in such places, it's true, but... How about a well-maintained highway in beautiful New Hampshire caught basking in the glory of the late afternoon sun? I can't believe it. Can't believe what, Michael? Three weeks, Mary. Three long weeks of gypsying. Three lovely weeks of going wherever we choose to go and staying as long as we like. Going on whenever we like. I just can't believe it. Well, what we'd better start thinking about is a campsite for tonight. Now, there's supposed to be a very good one at a place called Essex. You don't suppose we pass it, do you? Well, check the map. I have. I just can't seem to find it. Oh, Michael, slow down. There's a sign coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Huh. Colony, New Hampshire. Population 634. Well, maybe we can stop and ask somebody here where Essex is. Okay. I'd like to get everything squared away before it gets dark. We will. Remember, we haven't a care in the world. Michael, look out! What in the name of... What was that thing? I have no idea. I never saw anything like it before. It was some kind of an airship. It looked like it came right up out of the road right in front of us. Yeah, I think it was behind that clump of trees uh, at, the, at the turn, right up there. I'm going to get out and take a look. A look? A look at what? The thing's gone now. Yeah, but it, it must have burned off some grass or something. Hey, didn't you see the flames shooting out underneath it? Some kind of rockets, I guess. Come on. Just, I think it's just in back of these trees. No. I'm sure this is where it came from. Michael, do you think it was an unidentified flying object? <laughs> yeah, well, I sure couldn't identify it. Hey, there. Look. The ground's burned to a crisp in that big circle. Was the thing that big? No, I don't think so. Hey, if you ask me, there's been more than one of these landing and taking off here. Michael, let's get back to the car, please. It's... Well, it's kind of scary. Yeah, okay. But we ought to report this to somebody, don't you think? Gee, I don't know. Hey, everybody who reports an unidentified flying object always gets treated like a crackpot. If nobody believes you, what's the good of reporting it? They'll have to believe us. We saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what they all say. 
Well, we can bring them back here and show them where the grass is burned off. Yeah, there is that. Michael, that was a real thing we saw. And we don't know where it came from or, or what kind of a threat it may represent. Well, somebody ought to check it out. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay. We'll report it when we get to, uh, what was the name of that town? Uh, Colony. Colony, New Hampshire. Population 634. And, uh, that's the way it was, Sheriff Marcus. I mean, the thing nearly scared us to death. Pushing up out of nowhere, right in front of us, shooting out flames and everything. What they always say, you know, about flying saucers is that they're just some kind of optical illusion. Well, this was not an optical illusion, Sheriff. It was just as real as you are sitting there. Yeah, and we can take you back there and show you where the grass is all burned off. Well, we'll have a look later on, that's for sure. Later on? Right now, what I'd like is to have a talk with Annie Stebbins about this. Oh, who's Arnie Stebbins? Mayor of Colony. We don't hardly ever do anything without consulting Arnie on it first. Uh, where was you on your way to? Oh, well, we're just sort of jiggling around, you know. We're uh, on a camping trip. Uh, thought we'd see as much of New England as we can in three weeks. Well, we did want to get to a place called Essex before dark. They say there's a good campsite there, and... Well, we just thought we'd like to set up camp before dark. Don't know as you'd be able to do that... Essex is about 60 miles on down the road. Oh, darn. It would have been nice to get there before dark, that's all. Tell you what. I'll take you on down to May Norton's place. Where's that? May's widow lady lives other end of town, the old daily place. We haven't got a real honest-to-goodness restaurant in Colony, but May sometimes gives folks on the way through their dinners. Even puts them up for the night. Oh, well, I don't think we'd want to stay for the night. Oh, dinner doesn't sound like such a bad idea, though. You could have dinner while I'm having my talk with Annie Stebbins. Then we can all go have a look at the place where your thing took off. Ought to be able to make it there before dark. I just don't like to make a move without I talk to Annie first. <laughs> I want to tell you, Mr. and Miss Duncan, you're going to get one of the finest meals you ever ate. Mrs. Norton's a good cook, is she? Good. <laughs> Never seen her equal. How do, Thad? Hello, May. You feel like cooking a big dinner for a couple of tired tourists tonight? Well, I reckon I could see my way clear, too. Be the regular price. It's four dollars a piece, which she always charges. Well, come in. Come in. You can make yourself comfortable there in the sitting room till I get things on the table. Be maybe a half hour or so. Just make yourselves right at home. May doesn't stand on ceremony. I just want to have a word with her, and then uh, I'll go have my talk with Annie. How long do you think you'll be? Oh, ought to be back by the time you finish dinner, or shortly after. Something you want to talk to me about, then? You uh, wouldn't have a cup of coffee, would you? Well, I got some I made a while back. I guess it's still fit to drink. Sure it is. You didn't leave them in the sitting room just to get a cup of coffee, though, did you? Truth is, I've been wanting to talk to you, May. Well, go ahead and talk. Them folks you got out there in your sitting room, the Duncans, they come into my office saying they seen a flying saucer. Oh. Happened again, did it? I have to go talk to Annie Stebbins, of course. And I don't want them getting restless... Before I get back. I'll give them a good big dinner and see they take their time eating it. They won't get restless. Do you think there was anything odd about the way Sheriff Marcus took it when we told him about the unidentified flying object? No. In fact, I thought he took it very well. Well, I guess that's what I mean. I mean, I, I think he believes us. <laughs> well, didn't you want him to? Yeah, but I didn't expect him to. He didn't even seem surprised. Well, it's just too bad there aren't more people around like him. We'd have had the whole UFO mystery cleared up years ago. Maybe. I don't know, it just seemed sort of strange to me, that's all. You sure you wouldn't like another piece of the blueberry pie, Mr. Duncan? Oh, 
I just wouldn't have any place to put it, Mrs. Norton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't remember the last time anybody called me Mrs. Norton. You better just make it May. Well, if I can't get you to eat anything more, why don't we just take our coffee into the living room while we're waiting for Thad to get through chewing the fat with Arnie? Hmm. And I'm kind of surprised it's taken him so long. Oh, things don't move very fast in Colony, Mr. Duncan. A couple of old town people like Thad and Arnie get to talk and they could go on half the night. Hmm. Uh, maybe you'd like some of my blackberry brandy? Oh, no, thank you. I don't think so. Oh, I feel fine just the way I am. So, you seen a flying saucer, did you? We sure did. How did you know that? Uh, Thad said something about it before he left. What was it you wanted Thad to do about the flying saucer after you told him about it? Well, I don't know. I I just always thought you report a thing like that to an official, that's all. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe Annie can think of something, though I don't know what it'd be. If you don't mind my saying so, you might have been smarter just to mind your own business. I think UFOs are everybody's business. You know, why, why, why do you think we would have been smarter? Well, no reason, I guess, except it usually is. Smarter to mind a person's own business. And I still say that a UFO sighting is my business. I think people shrug them off too easily. They can't all be weather balloons or optical illusions. Too many of the things have been seen. Well, I never said you've seen a weather balloon. Well, you did say we should have minded our own business. Well, your own good was what I meant. You know, how do you... In what way, for your own good? If I was you and wanted to finish my nice vacation like I planned, I'd just get up from here right now and get into my car and I'd drive right on ahead to wherever it was I wanted to get to in the first place. I wouldn't spend one more minute than I had to in the town of Colony. Why? Just advice, I said. No explaining. Well, you can't just advise us to do something like that without giving us a reason. Sure I can. I just did. That's the story they told me, Annie. I figured there wasn't much question but what they seen the thing. It was too bad. I figured I'd better come to you with it. Best for you to decide what has to be done. Oh, you done right. I, I'm just wondering if maybe it, it won't have to go a little higher than me before it's settled. Up to you to decide that, I guess. Well, one thing I can tell you right now. We've got to keep those two in town. We can't let them leave Colony. Keep them how, Arnie? They're itching to get on their way right now. How am I going to talk them into staying? You're the sheriff, ain't you? Uh, yeah. Got a jail, ain't you? But, Arnie... Well, you'll have to hold them, Thad. Hold them for what? Ain't no law against thinking you saw a flying saucer. Well, to think of something. They can't be allowed to leave Colony. Not alive. They can't. A quiet drive along a peaceful New England road has led to a UFO sighting. And the UFO sighting has led to danger for two innocent people. So much for the idea, if anyone had it, that you must go looking in the wilds of Transylvania for improbable and dangerous happenings. Start being careful right in your own home while waiting for me to return shortly with Act Two. There's been a great deal of speculation upon the nature and origin of unidentified flying objects. The speculation has led to a wealth of conjecture, but a remarkable dearth of answers. Many reasonable thinking men and women believe the UFOs to be very real. At least as many others believe them to be figments of mass imagination. Our story doesn't pretend to offer an answer. It simply explores one of many possibilities. That's most likely the sheriff back from talking to the mayor. Now, don't let on I said what I said to you. And advising us to run, you mean? It wouldn't do you two no good. And it most likely get me into a mess of trouble. Well, all right. We won't say anything about it, will we, Michael? 
<laughs> Why, I suppose not, although I... All right, all right, I'm coming. Keep your shirt on. Everything all right, May? Well, of course, everything's all right. Come on in. Sorry to keep you two waiting around like this. Annie made me go over your story about two, three times. He's right concerned about it. Hmm. Now, are we going to have a, a look at the place the thing took off from? Oh, well, yes, we'll do that, of course. First, though, we're all going to meet in my office, town hall. Well, it's going to be dark if we don't stop fooling around. Little lady's 100% right. We'd better be on our way. Mayor Stebbins, I want you to meet Mr. and Ms. Duncan, two I told you about. A uh, pleasure indeed. Glad to know you, Mayor. Don't you think we'd better get started? I, I mean, uh, Michael and I still have to find a place to spend the night. Oh, there's plenty of time, Ms. Duncan. I'm a man never did like to rush things headlong. Better to consider a thing from all angles first, don't you think? Now, where were you two driving from today? Well, we spent last night at a motel just outside Stamford. We plan to start our real uh, camping tonight. A place called Essex was where you wanted to get to? Yes, that's right. Well, now, where'd you stop for lunch today? What difference could that possibly make? We uh, stopped at a roadside restaurant. I didn't notice uh, what town it was near. Have anything to drink at the uh, roadside restaurant? Drink? Uh, a cup of coffee, I think. No alcoholic beverages? We don't drink, Mayor Stebbins. You didn't stop anywhere along the way in the afternoon and uh, have a drop? No, I told you, we don't drink. Well, well, why all the questioning, Mayor? We stopped at the sheriff's office to report the sighting of an unidentified flying object. Uh, why are we being questioned? Well, I'll tell you how it is, Mr. Duncan. Thad and I take our responsibility to the town of Colony right serious. Yes, so? One of the things we will not tolerate is drunken driving. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, sir, but uh, what has that got to do with us? Well, I'm the kind of man, Mr. Duncan, that likes to keep both feet on the ground. I believe half of what I see and very little of what I hear. So, when it comes to saucers, I never seen one. Neither did we, sir, until this afternoon. And you're sure you saw one then? Yes, sir, quite sure. Thad... Remember the time Roy Beecher thought he saw a flying saucer? Drunk school he was at the time. <laughs> Spent the night in jail and had a good laugh at himself the next day for thinking he'd seen a flying saucer. <laughs> I remember it well. In my opinion ever since that anybody thinks he sees a flying saucer, he's been drinking too much. Oh, there's to it. Flying saucer, too much booze. This is ridiculous. Look, you're accusing us of drunken driving? I've got no choice. You claiming you saw a flying saucer and all. But I tell you, we don't drink. We never drink. Don't you have some kind of a test? Blow up a balloon or something like that? Too late for that now. Might not have been when you first came in, but it is now. Hey, besides, you've had one of May Norton's monstrous big suppers on top of whatever it was you had to drink this afternoon. So, best you just uh, spend the night here with us. We can talk more about it in the morning. Spend the night here with you? We've got a right comfortable jail here. Right back there, through that door. Are you suggesting that my wife and I spend the night in your jail? Not just suggesting it, Mr. Duncan. That's the way it's going to be. Michael, he... Michael, that gun. Sheriff Marcus, you are going to be very sorry you drew that gun. Maybe so. Meantime, you two just go on back through that door... And we'll get you tucked in for the night. Michael? Good morning. You awake? Yeah, I've been awake for quite a while. I thought I'd let you sleep as long as you could. I'm surprised I went to sleep at all. Did you? Yes, um, not really so bad, you know. We slept in motels that weren't any better. Yeah, well, I'd rather sleep in a motel just the same. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the indignity of being jailed for the night. That's what makes it so bad. And for drunken driving. Oh, it wasn't for that, Mary. I... Listen, I think we got put in jail because we saw a flying saucer. I mean, I figure they're... 
They're hooked up somehow to that UFO we saw. Who, the mayor and the sheriff? How could they be? I don't know, but why else would they want to lock us up? Well, then you think the drunken driving charge was, was just an excuse? Oh, sure, of course it was. Mr. and Mrs. Duncan? Yeah, who is it? May Norton. I brought your breakfast. Oh, well, I'm a lot more interested in getting out of here than I am in breakfast. Wouldn't want you driving off on an empty stomach. What time does the sheriff get in in the morning? I don't know. Different times, I expect. I don't have a key to the cell there. I'll have to shove the trays in under the door. There's country cured ham, fried eggs, home fried potatoes, hot biscuits and honey. Hope you got a good appetite. <laughs> well, that's one thing we won't be able to complain about, at least. The food. Well, I'll be bringing all your meals. I'll see to it you're fed real good. Yeah, well, this is the last meal that you're going to have to bother with because the sheriff has no excuse whatever for holding us any longer. He's going to have to let us go this morning. Well, I wouldn't depend on it if I was you. Eat your breakfast before your eggs get cold. You busy, Annie? Oh, come in, Thad. Come in. You been in to check up on our guest this morning? Ain't been to my office yet. Don't know as I'll get down there for a while. Kind of embarrassing. You decided yet what we're going to do about them? Yeah, I reckon so. We'll have to check it out first, of course. I don't feel comfortable about it, Annie. Any special reason? Well, this young couple... They're the kind of folks that's likely to have a whole slew of friends and relations fretting over them if they don't show up where they're expected. How long a vacation they on? Three weeks, I think one of them said. Just starting, too. Hmm. Just kind of meandering around, camping wherever they happen to feel like it? That's the idea I got. No advanced itinerary? You wouldn't think so. Well, then, I, I don't see we got anything to worry about. Sooner or later, their folks are going to be out looking for them. Dad, we're going to have to convert them. We're going to have to take them over and keep them here. It's the only way. Lunchtime. Yeah, start you off with some nice clam chowder. Where's the sheriff? And well, I couldn't rightly say, Mr. Duncan. I did see him over at Harry's Diner around 10.30 or 11, but where are you? Well, we haven't now? seen a soul all morning. I mean, except for you, there's been nobody in here the whole day. Well, I reckon he must have had business somewhere. Well, the sheriff has got no right to keep us in jail, and we want to get out. Hey, I have the right to make a phone call. Now, I should have been allowed to make a phone call last night. Oh, it looks like I'm going to have to tell you the whole story. What whole story? Here, just let me shove your lunch under the door here. You can eat while you're listening. I don't want to eat anything. Might as well, Michael. Well, what story are you going to tell us? Well, it started a couple of years ago. What started? Well, that was when they first landed. The flying saucers. Do you mean flying saucers have been sighted here before? Oh, my, Yes. I was sitting out in my front yard there, shelling peas. I recollect like it was yesterday. They came swooping down out of the sky, like to scare me out of my wits. Three of them there was in that first bunch. I knew there'd been more than one landing in that place. I seen folks coming out of their houses, looking toward where they'd landed, you know. So I put my pan of peas to one side, and I started walking in that direction, along with the rest of them. And, well... It's a funny thing. What? What funny thing, man? Well, there's a spell there where everything was real mixed up and I don't remember very well. You don't remember what? Well, for one thing, what they looked like. Who? The folks, those things, whatever they was that got out of those flying saucers. I've talked to some of the others and they can't remember that part either. Like it got erased or something. All I remember is just a kind of jumble. Until that evening, I guess it would be, that same evening. Why, what happened that evening? They had us all collected in a place that looked like one of them mad scientists' laboratories. Well, like you see in the old movies, you know. They had the whole town in there, every soul of us. 
I found out later it was down in the basement of the town hall there. They'd rigged the old cellar down there for a laboratory. Still using it, they are. Still? You mean uh, they're still around? Wait till I tell you. Thad Marcus and Arnie Stebbins were already running things. They'd been converted before we woke up. Or, or we come to, or whatever it was we did. Converted? That's what they called it. They was leading us one at a time up to a thing that looked like a dentist chair. And they'd make us sit in it and put a thing kind of like a hairdryer over our heads. And then they'd flip a lot of switches, Thad Marcus and Arnie Stebbins, just like they knew what they were doing. And then whoever was in the chair would kind of shiver and slump down for a minute until Thad and Arnie threw some more switches. Then they'd take that one back to his seat and lead up the next one. Well, what were they doing to the people in the chair? Converting. I don't know what you mean by uh, converting. Well, you will when I come to that part. They put me in the dentist chair and put the hairdryer thing over my head and started flipping their switches. I got a funny feeling. I never forget it. Like my head was being all separated into little bitty pieces and put back together in a different way. Something like that. Well, I passed out for a minute. When I come to, they was leading me back to my seat with the others. Only it wasn't me. It wasn't you. Well, I was... It seemed like I was occupying just a little corner of my head while somebody or something else was using the rest of it. Well, I don't understand. Well, I didn't either at first, but I did later on. One of the things out of the flying saucers had taken me over. I was still in there, the real me, but I had nothing to do with what my body thought or said or did. I'd been possessed. But what about... What about the rest of them? All just like me. Took over. Every last one of them. Uh, and are they uh, still controlled? Still are. Every last soul in this town. And how did you uh, get free? Stubborn, that's all. I just wouldn't give in to all that electrical mumbo-jumbo. Kept on resisting and fighting till I got the upper hand. How could you do that when uh, the others couldn't? I've been thinking about that a lot, and I think I got it figured out. My great or my great great grandmother, something like that, was burned for a witch when they had the trouble over in Salem. Maybe I inherited something from her. Uh, so, what are you saying? That you're a witch? Oh, man, no. I don't believe in that kind of nonsense. No, what I'm saying is all them women that got accused of being witches, all they was was just stubborn women. I mean, stubborn, way past ordinary. So stubborn, they just would have their own way and nothing else would do. And that's what you think you inherited from your great-great-grandmother. Her stubbornness. Well, I got it. No question about that. Come to some alien taking over my mind, I was just too pig-headed to let him have it, that's all. But uh, what about the others? I mean, all the rest of the people who, who've been taken over... Well, it's my opinion that if they had just stood up and refused to give in to the aliens, they'd all be free right now. What happened to the alien who, who tried to take possession of you? I just threw her out. Last I've heard of her, I don't know what became of her. Evaporated, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, quite a story. It's more than a story, as you'll find out. What do you mean, as we'll find out? Don't you see? They'll have to convert you. What else can they do now that you know about the flying saucers? This time tomorrow, unless you can figure some way out of it, you'll be one of them. Could be more terrifying than the prospect of having your mind and body taken over by an alien being, then being left with nothing of your true self but a small, impotent corner of awareness. To be forced to watch helplessly as your own body performed deeds you found unspeakable. This is what may confront Michael and Mary Duncan when I return shortly with Act Three. If 
we're to believe May Norton's story, the bodies and minds of all the citizens of Colony, New Hampshire, have been taken over and are controlled by alien beings who come and go in spaceships, like the one Michael and Mary Duncan saw on their way into the village. Michael and Mary are being held incommunicado in the colony jail and are, again, according to May Norton, slated to be taken over themselves by the aliens. They can't do it, can they, Michael? I don't know. Take control of our minds? Do you really believe that all the people in this whole town are being controlled by... by beings from another galaxy or something? It sounds pretty outlandish, I grant you. But look, there's something fishy going on here. It's got something to do with that UFO we saw. Well, then what are we going to do, Michael? I don't know. I'm trying to think of something. You, uh, made up your mind, Annie, about them, have you? Yeah. Been in touch with the folks up on the mothership about it? I had a long talk with them earlier this morning. They agree with us that there ain't nothing we can do but take over the Duncans. Uh, I just wish I could feel more comfortable about it. What exactly was decided? Uh, the ship's sending down the two new colonists around 8 tonight. I figure we can have the takeover down in the lab around 8.30. Sound all right to you? Sounds fine. Sooner I get them two out of my jail, better I like it. Where'd you figure on putting them up? Well, uh... I thought about letting them have a couple of rooms over at May Norton's place. She's just rattling around in that big old house all by herself. All that extra space just going to waste. Good idea. Wouldn't hurt to have somebody keep an eye on May anyway. She's still making trouble, is she? Kind of halfway subversive talk. Nothing anybody can put a finger on. Mm. Now I'll schedule the takeover for half past eight tonight. We'll have everybody in to witness it as usual. All down? Every man jack of them. Want me to let them all know? I guess you better, yes. Tell them, uh, 8.30 sharp. We don't want to waste time waiting for anybody. Howdy, May. I've been looking for you all day, Thad. Where you been? Oh, here and there. What'd you want to see me about? Well, that young Duncan boy you got over there in jail, he asked me to tell you he wants to see you. Said you hadn't been in all morning. No. Well, he's busting to talk to you. I had other business round and about. You've been keeping him fed good, ain't you? Yes, and that was something else I wanted to talk to you about. It don't seem right shoving that tray into them under the door. That's no way to serve a meal. Why don't you let me have a key to their cell so as I can bring the trays in and serve them right? I, uh, I don't think so, May. I'd rather not take a chance them jumping you or something. Main reason I stopped around, there's a meeting tonight, basement of the town hall, half past eight o'clock. Down in that laboratory place? That's right. I guess that means you're planning to take over the Duncans, don't it? You just get to the meeting on time, May. That's all you got to worry about. Michael, what are you doing? I'm just checking to see if there's a loose bar anywhere. I want to get out of this place. Oh, escape. I mean, that's a little melodramatic, isn't it? Well, damn it, we could rot here, Mary. I mean, with May bringing us our meals, there's no reason why the sheriff would ever have to come around. I don't know. In view of what May told us, I'd just as soon he didn't. What do you mean about aliens taking possession of us? Yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Do you believe it? Well, I mean, we, we, we saw a flying saucer, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, we're being held in jail here for nothing. Are the aliens any harder to believe? You boots me again. May, supper time. Pot roast and mashed potatoes tonight. Uh... Have you seen anything of Sheriff Marcus? Thad? Sure, I saw him. Told him you wanted to talk to him, but I don't think it done any good. No, no, no. He hasn't been around. I'll just shove these trays under the door here. You better eat up right away. I tried to get the keys to the jail from Thad, but he wouldn't give them to me. Said I'd like to have them so I could serve you dinner proper. Were you going to let us out? Well, of course. What else would I want the keys for? Very good of you, May. Well, you'd have had to take me away with you. 
I couldn't have stayed on after turning you loose. Yeah, I've been wondering about that, May. Um, why haven't you run away? I mean, you're not possessed by these aliens. There's nothing holding you here. I don't know. I, I've always lived here all my life. Well, that's one thing. And then for another, I keep figuring sooner or later I'll get the chance to do some good. I mean, help set the others free. Or maybe keep them from taking over somebody like you. I don't know. I just stayed around. Is there any way you can uh, keep them from taking us over, May? No way I can think of. I've been racking my brains. And I've got some bad news, I'm afraid. Oh, what bad news? They're planning on doing it tonight. Tonight? 8.30 sharp. There's a meeting in the basement under the town hall. That's where they got that laboratory place I told you about. A, uh, a meeting? Yeah. They all turn out the whole town whenever there's a takeover. Well, what, 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 do they, what do they look like? I mean, uh, the, these creatures, you know, the creatures from outer space. Well, some like us. I mean, two arms, two legs, all that. A face with two eyes, a nose, a mouth. Only just not quite exactly in the right places. You know what I mean? And hair, more like young ducks down than hair. Well, we don't see much of them. They don't show up except when they absolutely have to. You'll see a couple of them tonight. We will. Yeah. The two they send down to take you over. Oh. All right, now look. There, there's got to be some way to stop them. There must be. I wish I could think of what it is. <laughs> Mary, I've let my watch run down. Ten after eight. Michael, they'll be coming for us soon. All right, now look, when they come, uh, I imagine it'll be the sheriff. Don't, um, don't make a fuss of any kind, you know. Don't try to hold back or anything like that. Why not? Well, I want the sheriff to be as uh, favorably disposed toward us as possible. I'm going to ask him to let me make a little speech before the changeover. What kind of a speech, Michael? Well, I think it's just as well you don't know in advance, Mary. Have you thought of a way to, to keep us from being taken over? No. Well, maybe. You two can take your places on the podium there to the left of the mayor. I'll be sitting just to your left. Why do we have to be on the stage? You'll find out. All in good time. Michael. Yes. Michael, look at those two standing toward the back of the stage. Just behind the mayor. The aliens. They're really not human, are they? No. Oh, Michael, I don't want one of those things inside my mind. No. All right. Let's come to order here. Sheriff Marcus, have these two been informed of the nature of tonight's proceedings? Not yet, Mayor. Please so inform them. Michael Duncan, Mary Duncan, you are hereby served notice that you will this night have the honor of contributing your bodies and the remainder of your lives to the advancement of the great new civilization which is about to be realized upon your earth. How can you do a thing like that? You've already been told all you need to know. I see. Listen to me. You who are enslaved in your own minds and bodies, hear me and think. Think as yourselves. You can do it if you try. One of your number has done it. There is one of you who has been secretly free the whole time. Me, I'm free. Me, May Norton, I'm the one. All right, all right, that'll be enough. You, Mayor Stebbins, I want to talk to you. Not to the arrogant creature who has assumed command of your body, Arnie Stebbins, but you. The Arnie Stebbins, who was once the mayor of this town. The Stebbins, who can hear me, but cannot act. I'm speaking to you, Arnie Stebbins. You can act, if you will it strongly enough. Look, you were once a strong man, a leader. That strength is all it takes to set you free. Use it. Resist. Think yourself your own man, and you will be your own man. Thad, make him stop. Oh, Thad I, doesn't I, want me to stop. Not the real Thad. He's like you, Arnie Stebbins, and all the rest of you. He wants to be free also. Try, Arnie. Try. Oh, 
Now make him stop. You can do it, honey. You can. No, no. Arnie Stebbins has won. Arnie Stebbins is free. And what he has done, you can all do. Try. Be stronger than they are. Try. Duncan, help me. I'm Thad Marcus. Really, Thad Marcus. I, I, I want out. Yes, you'll get out. You all will. You're all going to be free. It ain't quite 24 hours yet, Mr. Duncan, and more than half of them's free already. And them that ain't are harboring some mighty sick aliens. You think they'll all be able to free themselves? Every last one of them. No doubt in my mind, whatever. Where? I mean, I, I just wondered what happens to the aliens when they're cast out. I don't know. They're out. That's all I care about. We'll be all right here, Mr. Duncan. You two can go ahead with your trip now. Uh, you don't think we ought to uh, stay until they're all free? I don't think there's any need for it. We're all right now, or soon we'll be, all of us. The only thing that worries me... What, there's still something, May? I can't help wondering how many other towns they've got. The way they had Colony. How many towns the size of Colony, New Hampshire, do you suppose there are in this huge country of ours? And what do you do if you see an unidentified flying object taking off near one of them? Stop at the sheriff's office and report it? Or drive straight on through the town as if somebody or something were after you? I'll be back in a few minutes. Colony is just another small New England town these days. The people go about their commonplace affairs as though nothing more melodramatic than a Sunday school picnic had ever happened there. But they remember... Arnie Stebbins never meets with the town council without wondering if they are all truly themselves. And Tad Marcus, making his rounds in the sheriff's official car, keeps a weather eye out for unidentified flying objects. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Morgan Fairchild, Francis Sternhagen, Jackson Beck, and Guy Sorrell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division... And sign off the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>